Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we talk a lot about calculus on generalized surfaces. And you might already know, in order to do integration on manifolds, we have to define so-called differential forms. And this is exactly what we will do today in part 29. However, as you might already know, before we start with the definitions, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, on YouTube or on Patreon. And please don't forget, with the link in the description, you can download a lot of additional material for the videos. Okay, so now for the whole video here, capital M will denote a smooth manifold with dimension n. So you know, usually that means we have a C infinity manifold. Moreover, this implies that the tension space is well defined for every point P and M and it's an n-dimensional vector space. Okay, so far nothing new, but please recall, in the last two videos, we have defined so-called alternating k-forms on a vector space. And now we will look at these k-forms on the tangent space Tpm. And there we can reuse our notation given by old k. Hence, every element here is an alternating k-form defined on the vector space Tpm. However, now of course, we don't want to fix a point on a manifold, so we go through all them. And indeed, this is now the object we want to define. We have a lowercase omega that maps m into this set. However, with the requirement that each point p gets sent to the correct space here on the right hand side. More precisely, the point P here is mapped to an alternating k-form on Tpm. And we can denote this k-form with omega of P or we just write P in the index of omega. But still, the essential part here is that the vector space is always fixed as Tpm. And now it should not be a surprise for you that this object gets a very similar name. In fact, we simply call it a k-form again. However, we call it a k-form on the manifold M. So there you see, this is the difference. We put a lot of k-forms together to get a k-form on the manifold. And then it's also not surprising that we can also extend the wedge product. So here we can define omega wedge eta as a k-form on M. And as you might already expect, we can do this pointwisely. This means we just put in a point P and then we use the ordinary wedge product for k-forms. So we have omega of P wedge eta of P. Therefore, if omega is a k-form on M and eta an s-form on M, then omega wedge eta defines a k-plus s-form on M. So you see, we can easily reuse all the definitions for multilinear algebra. For example, we can do a similar thing for the pullback with a function f. In fact, now here f can be any smooth functions between manifolds. So let's say we have another manifold n and f maps n to m. So in the case that omega is a k-form on m, we can define a new one on n with this pointwise definition as before. This means we simply use the pullback we already know for alternating k-forms. However, this one was only possible for linear maps, which means now we have to use the differential of f. So you see, we have the pullback of omega p with respect to dfp. And there you see, this is the correct interpretation we have for f star omega. Okay, so now before we can talk about the important differential forms, I first want to recall the basis elements. So what we need is the coordinate basis in Tpm and the dual basis to that. And please recall, for every chart uh here on the manifold, we have such a given coordinate basis. Moreover, it's always good to have in mind that we have a map here from u to rn. And we also have it the other way around and we call it phi. And with this parameterization, we get the coordinate basis in Tpm. And there you know, the notation we use for that is given by del1, del2, and so on. And please never forget, these are tangent vectors 
defined by using the standard basis in Rn. You might recall we just do phi star of ej. And at this point we already know phi star is the same as the differential of phi. Okay, and now we are able to transform this basis to a basis of the dual space of dpm. This means a basis of tpm star. And at this point we already know this is the same as the space of the alternating one forms. Hence, the dual basis of tpm gives us a basis of alt1. And the notation for this one, you already know, we denote it by dx1, x2 and so on. And in order to make everything very precise, we will also put p into the index. Moreover, please note I also use superscripts here, because I want to have the Ricci calculus in mind. Okay, and now please recall, such a dual basis is defined with the Kronecker delta. More concretely, it means if we take dxj and we put del k into it, then we get the Kronecker delta jk out. And indeed, there you just need to know it's 1 or 0. Hence, there you should see it's always possible to define such a dual basis. Okay, so now this means we have a nice basis for old 1, but this also implies that we can write down a very nice basis for old k. Namely, we just have to combine the dxj's. And of course, the correct combination is given with the wedge product. And in order to write this down, we need enumerated indices, so let's call them mu1, mu2 and so on. And then the simple idea is that we just have a wedge product with k factors. So with that, we immediately have an alternating k form here. And now the only thing we need to do is to go through all possible combinations. And because of the alternating structure here, it's sufficient to go through increasing indices. So we look at all possible values of the indices mu j, but there should be an increasing order here. And there it's not hard to check at all that this gives us in fact a basis of this vector space here. And I would say here it's very helpful to look at an example. And there let's say we take a manifold M of dimension 3. And then we want to write down the basis of the space given by the two forms. This means here we have the wedge product with only two factors. So the first combination could be dx1 combined with dx2. Hence, this is already one basis element. And then for the next one, we could combine dx1 with dx3. So this is another basis element, but you see, still with increasing indices. And since 3 is the highest index we can choose here, we only have one possible combination remaining. Namely, we go from 2 to 3. And that's it, this is the basis of all 2. Now, this is very important to remember, because we will use these forms in two-dimensional integrations later. Okay, so we have a basis here, so we can write down how each k-form on the manifold looks like. In fact, this is the important conclusion of this video. So the idea is that for each point p, we can always choose a chart and then we can locally describe the k-form. And there you just need to know that omega of p is always an alternating k-form on the tangent space. In other words, it's given by a linear combination of the basis vectors. Therefore, we just sum over all increasing indices mu1 to mu k. And then this is just standard linear algebra, so we have the basis vectors here and in front of them we have coefficients, so scalars. And a good name for these coefficients is omega with indices. And obviously we need all the indices here, so mu1, mu2 and so on. So in fact we have k numbers here. And in order to make it clear, we also write that this coefficient depends on the point p. In other words, what we get here are maps defined on the chart u. So we just have real valued functions with domain u. And these we just call the component functions of omega with respect to the chart uh. Hence, in summary, we see 
This is the local description of the K form on M. And exactly this we can finally use to make the definition of a differential form. Now, the first thing is very quick. If all the component functions here are differentiable at the point P, then we simply say that the K form on M omega is differentiable at P. So you see, this is a new notion. Now a K form on M can be also differentiable. Moreover, by the definition of a smooth manifold, as always, you should see it does not matter which chart we choose here. More precisely, if we have this differentiability for one chart around P, we have it for any chart around P. Okay, and now you might already guess, we want to extend this differentiability to all points P. So the assumption is that omega is differentiable at all points P in M. And then omega is called a differential form. More concretely, we would say it's a differential form on M. And then I can already tell you, the common notation one uses now for the whole set of differential forms is given by a capital omega. And please don't forget, we also still have the k in the notation. So obviously, we distinguish differential forms that are one forms, two forms, and so on. Moreover, one usually extends this definition to the zero forms by just saying that they are given by the smooth functions on the manifold. So this makes sense and the common thing is to say that everything here is in the C infinity case. Okay, so now I would say you really want to see some examples. However, that's something we should do in the next video. So I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye.